Looking at how one thinks about discounted cash flow actually in equation form, the thing to think about is that value accumulates based upon whether or not you're counting your cash flow today, your cash flow that comes next year, the cash flow that comes in year three, year four, year five, year six, off into the future to some end. So you want to understand what the value of what you have today is, what the value of what's coming next year is, what the value of coming, what coming the third year is, the fourth year, the fifth year, all the way out. Each of those, we assume, has a discrete value. You don't get your, quote, dividends until the end of the year. So there's a discrete value. And you want to say, okay, how much is this worth to me, worth for me today? And this, uh, this analysis comes from the use of a, uh, the idea of a bond, which you invest, say, $100,000, and you get what's called a coupon, which means every quarter or every year, you actually get a check in the mail. If the bond has a, has a rate of 5%, and you invest $100,000, every year you would get 5% or $5,000, a check in the mail. That's the coupon. Actually, what happens is you tear one, the old way with paper and everything. You tear one off, and you go to the bank, and you get your, your coupon rate the $5,000 every year. And that, that is how this whole idea, that's the model for what this, how this works. Putting your money into a corporate bond would give you a coupon of 5%, and they guarantee they're going to pay it, and they, have, they guarantee they're going to pay it before any of their shareholders get any money. That means it's riskier to be a shareholder than a bondholder, Therefore, the rate has to be higher than that 5%, which we just use as an example. And that same process trickles through the economy. So when you really think about dividends or potential value that you accumulate through capital appreciation, um, is the same idea. Every year, there's a certain amount you get. And that's the idea of these free cash flows. In the last video, we talked about how you calculate the free cash flows. In this particular case with this equation, the value of our asset, it was a bond in the other situation, but here it's the value of your enterprise. This is uh, Jim's company A. Jim's company A, what's it worth? Well, it's worth the amount of dividends that come from the company the first year, the dividends that come the second year, net any negative outcomes I have to put into it in order to get it started, which is this free cash flow zero. I have to pay $100,000 and I put it in, and then I get 5% every year forever, right? So the idea when you think about this particular equation, you think about your business plan and business model and what the startup investment is, how much money you have to get started, you have to buy equipment, you have to get a lease, you have to buy a truck, whatever it is you have to do, that $500,000 or $200,000 is free cash flow zero. You pay that at the very beginning, and it's a generally an outflow or a negative month number. Hopefully, your free cash flows start to turn positive. It may be that free cash flow one, which is at the end of your first year, might also be a loss, which would be another negative cash flow, negative $100,000 or something like that. But it may be positive, and what you're trying to do, obviously, with your business plan is turn the business positive within the first couple of years. And then you start getting positive cash flows in year for free cash flow three and free cash flow four and free cash flow five and all of those things. So first you figure out these cash flows. The second step, and that is these FC, F1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you figure those out. And by the way, they should come directly from your business plan. They, are, they, are, they would be off of the free cash flow statement, the modified cash flow statement. If you use the model that we've talked about in the, in the class, you use those numbers and roll that out, and that becomes your free cash flow numbers. The next step that you have to do is you have to figure out what your uh, discount rate is. In, in the technical sense, it's the weighted average cost of capital for firms this is the, in the financial industry that you can actually calculate this, your cost of equity from looking at things like beta and alpha and your cost of, of debt based upon what your, your, uh, your rates are. Average those together and put your tax implications in there. 
and you have a calculation of weighted average cost of capital, which you learn from finance. Um, in, the, in the arena of a startup business, you don't really have a weighted average cost of capital because typically, you, well, you do, but it involves really only equity. You have very little debt. It's very hard to raise debt capital for a startup business. So it's really the cost of equity. And all of your paid in capital and your liabilities are essentially equity other than your current liabilities. And so therefore, how much do investors expect from you when you invest, when they invest in your company? What kinds of returns do they expect? Um, this is uh, dependent upon the situation generally, but a rule of thumb that people tend to use in the industry um, because they have such high return requirements and their investors are so, their investors that put into their fund um, are looking for high returns in the overall portfolio. For any given business, they typically like to have five to ten times their money back in three to five years which means if they give you $100,000, they want $500,000 to a million dollars back in a payment if they, when they liquidate in the three to five year time frame. This is a huge rate of return, as you could calculate. But roughly, when you think through this, and this is a heuristic, not an actual fact or not an actual calculation, but that is somewhere in a 50 to 60% return. So that's like $100,000 that they invest, the next year that should be worth 150000 the next year it should be 1.5 times 150, whatever that number is, and grow at a rate like that very fast. So the discount rate that one can think about from a startup model to give you a sense of the valuation process is a 0.5. So the R in this case would be something like 0.5, 1 plus 0.5 or 1.5 raised to the first power for the first year second power for the second year, and onward. As I said, this is a huge rate of return, which is one of the reasons why there's so much uh, potential for making money when you look at business, uh, when you look at the venture capital industry. All right? The last thing you have to worry about is you could only plan so far out, particularly in, with something that has such complexity as a startup business and so much uncertainty. So you do have this problem of what do you do in the last year? What do you do in your final for that, for that free cash flow N? Which if you do a, your business plan is four years, N would be five. So your fifth year, how much is that, how much cash flow can one expect in that fifth year? That's the challenge of uh, free cash flow N. Or if you have a three year business plan, what is, can you expect in year four or year five? Um, I'll, we're going to talk more about this particular calculation specifically in the next video. But the way to be thinking about this and the way we talk about it is, notice that I said that venture capitalists want, want their money five to ten times what they've invested in three to five years. What that means is, and there are reasons for this, three to five years out, they want to get out of the investment. And the reason for this is that typically their investors give them money in funds that are like five to ten year long funds and then they want their money out again. So in order for them to invest in you, grow your business, get out of your business so they have money to give to their investors, uh, they have this rather constrained time frame. You have about five years in order to deliver the value five, six years, something like that. It got to ten. It all depends, right? And sometimes they hold on to you, whatever. But the point is, they're going to want this return a few years out. So the way we think about it is the free cash flow in year N is when the business is sold. In other words, you start the business, you grow the business, it's now making a million dollars in revenue. It makes a hundred thousand dollars in profit every year, and it is then sold to someone else, or it is an initial public offering. And how much would this business be worth if it was sold? Because if it was sold, and me as an investor owned fifty percent of it, and you were able to sell it, there's a million dollars in sales, and you were able to sell it at ten times sales because it was growing so fast. You sold it for ten million dollars. I would be able to get my 50%, which is $5 million. So as an investor, I put money in at the beginning, $1 million, you grew it, 
It's now worth 10. I own 50%. We sell it. I get my 5 million. So my 1 million went to 5 million in five years. That's how you think about the free cash flow in year N, year four, year five, whatever. You're essentially selling. Now that doesn't that this is modeling. It doesn't mean that you as an entrepreneur give up your business. It could be that it's that you that their share is sold to someone else. So another company owns 50% of your company. It could be that everybody sells and the whole business is sold. It could mean that it's sold to the public. That is, it's an, an initial public offering. You still run it and everything, but now the investor, the venture capitalist who is in, who was there for the startup is now out of it or uses the money that is freely traded if it's a public company and they actually distribute shares of your company to their investors but they're valued in the market so they know how much money they're getting back and it's liquid that's uh, that's the process um, <clears throat> in the next video what I'm going to talk about is the actual technical calculation of how one does the terminal value calculation without the selling and then we'll talk about how one values the the final cash flow when you're thinking about selling the business and those will be in the upcoming video